Okay, here we are, the uh, the Cancrete exhibit. Canadian Concrete Expo 2025. Dan found a toy. Dan, what did you find? I found a really cool little machine. What are you going to do with this thing? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'd have to find a new job, I think. But this, this is a really neat little machine. I see this is your early retirement. Shotcrete. So fortunately, we have, we have an expert here. How's it going? Eric from uh, from Cancrete been in several videos wealth of knowledge Eric what can you tell us about this thing what what is it this is our uh, shot creep robot I guess it's an it's an all-in-one can so, we call it the shot bot uh, sure you call it whatever you want <laughs> we call it the bot. wet we call it the wet crep 4 the wet crep 4 it sounds very German yeah, yeah. so these uh, they're made in Spain at Potsmeister Spain um, there's three sizes the three the four and the five so we decided to bring the four to the trade show so um, all-wheel drive, all-wheel steer. If you come up in the cab here, maybe, we can start with what it's mounted on. Okay. Now, just turn that on. So to turn this on. Yeah, so you can just leave that out. The power switch is on the side here. You just twist it to on. There you go. Is that on now? No, maybe the other way. There, there we go. go. Now, now it's, it's on. on. And then... I think you hit communicate, which is up here. There we go. Now it's alive. It's alive. Okay, so now we'll do the right outrigger. So hold this down, push this up. One of them. Oh, outrigger. Oh, mode. put it in out. The. And how critical are the outriggers on this? Like they just drop straight it's down, so. Yeah, they don't go very far. There's only two. Is it's it just, more just for stabilization? Okay, yeah. but not that it's gonna you fall can over. over. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now I put it in boom mode. And left. Rotate and up and down. Okay, and we have <coughs> show them the best feature, the one that everybody loves. It's black and white on this side, this side's proportional. If you're wondering why Dan's so rough on the boom, it's black and white on the one side. So turn on the oscillate. So that's that's doing your spring. Make your jokes in the comments right now. Well, I know. Get your minds out of the gutter, people. And Eric, you're saying the second nozzle can spray high pressure water? Yeah, so it's called a hydroscaler. So that blue hose that runs down the boom is a pressure washer hose. And there's a pressure washer pump on the back of the unit. So if you have, say, in a mine, a rock shaft, and there's loose rock scale on there, yeah. um, you can then blast that rock off or basically clean the surface. Um, ahead of time and then you can shock read on it after so instead of having to go up there with chisels hammers yeah. mechanically removing rock yeah, they call it a hydroscaler so this is two and a half inch line yep. hose and then we should probably there's a pump unit on this yep. thing too so, so the line itself we dangle down here you can imagine shock green spray gets all over everything on this yeah. unit so everything's easy to remove there's actually one hanger that's supposed to go on here that we didn't put on for the show the hose comes down this is just a holder here. It's not actually a clamp with okay. a, an end inside there. <coughs> and the hose runs up here. It comes off the reducer on the side of the pump. And then this is like a Putzmeister P730 or a TK30 flat pack. Um, so six inch material cylinders and it's all timed with the shock creep part. So on the unit, there's a accelerator pump for doing um, accelerator added to the shock creep at the nozzle. Uh, there's an air compressor on board and the pump kit and they're all timed and programmed by the computer that was on the side that we walked past over there. And that, uh, that reservoir for the admixtures was right over. Yeah, so this is the additive tank from here up and over to here. And this is the water tank here on this side for the hydroscaler. 
this is the pump for the additive, so that pumps it out and out the hose that we haven't run down the boom yet. And that was the fire extinguisher? Yeah, this is the fire extinguisher, so if you have a fire on board, pull the pin, pull it, and it applies the, I think it's a CO2 dry powder, and it floods the entire machine everywhere with material, so don't pull that unless you have to, it does a lot of damage, so. <laughs> okay, and then what was on the other side, there was a, a reel over here, I saw. Yeah. So this is a most people think that it's for concrete pump hose to reel it up. It's not. So this is actually a high voltage power cable reel. So on here we can wrap up to 100 meters of 600 volt cable and the entire machine is electric powered or diesel powered. Okay, so right now we're running entirely on diesel power um, because we don't have the plug in at the trade show. But if this was all hooked up, we can drive this thing into place inside of a tunnel or a confined space. We shut the diesel engine off, we plug it in, and the entire machine runs on electricity. So zero emissions, so you don't have to ventilate anything. Is that same diesel engine right now what would power the pump unit? Yes. It is. Okay. Yeah. So right now, Dan has a pump forward, pump reverse switch, yeah. and he can turn that on. The only thing that doesn't work on diesel power is the air compressor. So for shockcrete, you need like a 200 or 250 CFM air compressor. It's on board, but on here it's electric. So uh, it's in the side cabinet. So you need a separate diesel powered compressor if you're gonna run on diesel. But if it's plugged in, the entire machine's self-contained. You put concrete in the hopper and it'll spray, additive, water, all in one shot. And you were saying a kind of a fun little tidbit. To get in and out of this thing, you get out of the front, the yep. front of the cab, because... You're designed to work into a tunnel, so if a tunnel's only 8 feet wide, there'll be a wall right here, and you'd be stuck in the cab because there's no door to get out of. It's, it's that tight. Because it's that tight, so that's why you get out of the front, and then you can climb over the machine. There's walkways all the way across the top, and that's how you can get to the back of the machine. And this was a um, specialty mining application. Yep. So it's designed to be disassembled and taken apart. So if you notice, everything's kind of modular. The tank's bolted here, the engine's bolted here, the air compressor's bolted here, everything's bolted in pieces. When we sell one of these to a mine, the first thing they do is take it apart down to a bare frame rail. They put everything down the mine shaft a couple kilometers underground, and then they put it all back together. Oh, so it goes down disassembled, and that's just because yeah. of access. Yeah, so a mine shaft is typically like 10 feet square yeah. with an elevator going up and down, and you can't get this down the mine what shaft. What would this thing weigh, about 20,000 pounds, uh, 25,000 pounds? 30,000 pounds. It is? Yeah, so we t separate the pieces into smaller chunks, and then the last piece is the frame rail, and we actually have a drawing that you can chop the frame rail in half and weld it back together under oh, wow. if it doesn't <laughs> fit. So, um, okay. and it comes with disassembly and assembly instructions. And instructions on how to run it, as right. we established in the yeah. cab, the booklet. Yeah. So one fun tidbit, the, um, the nozzle, the oscillating nozzle, that can actually be purchased separately. Yep, yeah. so... I was having grand ideas of putting that on a boom pump. I seen the Meals guys in Australia uh, doing shotcrete off the end of the boom with a simple, similar... <laughs> assembly is available we can provide it um, it's a five axis head um, it's available in two inch three two and a half or three inch nozzles and you can mount that however works based on your pump manufacturer onto the end of any boom pump and you can run your two inch or two and a half inch line down your boom either inside your five inch pipe or attached to the side of it make sure you get approval from the pump manufacturer um, and then you can put a shot creep pump at the bottom of your boom pump so something like a 1005 yeah. or a TK40 um, and then you can shotcrete doing soil stabilization up a bank and you have five axis control of the head. So instead of being in a man basket with a shotcrete nozzle yeah. on your shoulder, um, you can get the boom to do all the heavy lifting for you. Or just do crazy stuff like what we've done and pump it through the five inch pipe and taper yeah. it down and <laughs> hope it doesn't plug. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hope you get the pipes at the end of the day. Yeah. So that's an amazing machine. So it's called the, the what was it? The wet crate wet four? Crate four. And yeah. the four, wet crate four. And the four is in reference to the reach? Um, probably, I actually think we have a three, a four, and a five. Okay. It's like small, medium, and large. Okay. So. Okay, so we got the medium here today. Yeah. So if you want one of these, 
He wants one. I would. I love a toy like this. Have you two met before? I think you guys have met before. Yeah, a couple times. But yeah, if you want one of these, reach out to Cancrete, Cancrete Equipment. And uh, they're on the East Coast, West Coast. Is Toronto considered East Coast? What do we call it here? Middle. Middle. Okay, Middle. I'm just an ignorant West Coaster. Central. So. Central. Central. Yeah. Central, but you guys cover the East Coast as well. Yeah. Out in BC also, Alberta. Uh, reach out to them and get yourself a wet cret. I can't even say that. Wet cret? Wet cret. Wet cret. I can't, yeah. Three or four. Can you, can you say it three, three times? Five. Say it three times. Wet cret four, wet cret four, wet cret four. That's why you're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep on pumping. <laughs>